Hey, I'm Caprice Goring. I am a bookworm and I love to read, although I don't make book reviews. So this isn't something I normally do, but it's something I'd like to do. So give this video a thumbs up or subscribe and maybe I'll make, I'll make more of these videos. Honestly, I love watching people's book reviews and I think it's be fun to make my own because I have a lot of opinions to share. So hi, today we are reviewing this book, The Ballad of Never After. Now I did get the special edition of Barnes and Noble and it is signed by Stephanie Garber herself. And not to spoil you guys or anything, but I loved it. I loved it. Here's a non-spoiler section. Who, those who have read Carval, you will absolutely love the books, Once Upon a Broken Heart. Because it takes our favorite character, Jax, well, he's my favorite character, and explores his story. To be honest, I think Jax made Carval for me. I did not love the main character in Carval. Her romance wasn't my fave. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one who didn't love Carval, but loved Once Upon a Broken Heart. It doesn't quite make sense to me because it's the same author in the same world. This is the best book that Stephanie Garber has ever written because the plot, the adventure, the romance, the character development is amazing. This is a lot better than Once Upon a Broken Heart and I really liked Once Upon a Broken Heart so that's saying a lot about this one. I hardly give five star ratings. This is a five star book. Was it perfect? Pretty much. For those who haven't read it, you can leave, go read it. Let's just have a spoiler discussion now. <laughs> this was me, the entirety of the book. Actually, I don't know. It was like this, it was all of the above. The book just continuously got better. We start off, Jax is obviously not trustworthy. The end of Once Upon a Broken Heart, you know, when they're like finding each other in Wolf Hall. And I felt like they were gonna kiss, but it was too soon. And um, they didn't even kiss in this book. You guys, which I don't even know why I expected that to happen because obviously his kiss would kill her. But I was like so many times, I was like, they're gonna kiss. And then they did it. And the tension and the slow burn was so good. Like I love fantasy, I love supernatural. I feel like the vampires in this book were so much more flowy, realistic, and great. Like in Once Upon a Broken Heart, it, it felt like kind of random, but this I was like, okay, I like this vampire-esque that we're going for. And she getting healed by chaos, also Apollo and the curse. I was like, no. I was so torn in the beginning. Now I hate Apollo. But I was so torn in the beginning because we don't really know Apollo that well. We don't know the real him, but we also feel really bad for him. And obviously Evangeline wants... Why do I feel like her name isn't Evangeline? Because all we hear is Little Fox. Evangeline, yes. She obviously like wants to give this marriage a go. She wants to try to work it out and that's great. But obviously we all love the enemy to lover thing with Jax. Also, Jax is such a jerk. He is such a jerk and we love it. She gets shot, she needs healing, he takes her, carries her butterflies, right? Evangeline's like plushy, we all love it. Can we talk about that part when Evangeline and Chaos are together and Chaos is trying to keep her from becoming a vampire? Jax come in and is like, what are you doing? And he's so territorial and amazing. Also, I love that Evangeline was like, okay, but I wanted a little bit more attention. She's like, why didn't your eyes linger on me? Cause my dress is like super thin. I loved that Jax was just constantly there. Oh, Evangeline's in danger, runs into Jax, backs up into Jax. Oh my gosh, Jax is there. I love that he was so consistent and loyal. He is so loyal, which makes zero sense and I love it. Also, getting to know his backstory, just knowing about that he's the archer and that he knew the Valors and one of them was in love with him. My all-time favorite part on was just when they were in the hollow. Evangeline, her character development and her understanding of her emotions skyrocketed. Like, I loved that we got to know Evangeline in this book. I feel like we knew Jax, we knew his personality but we didn't know him. We got to know both him and Evangeline so much in this book. And when they were in the hollows and she had the little pet dragon, that was so cute. She also talked about her parents in such a natural morning way, which I really liked. The adventure of finding all the stones. I felt like I was reading a medieval, I was reading a medieval scavenger hunt, which I was all for. Also, we need to talk about Lala. I love her. 
I do, and Evangeline loves her, but also Evangeline and I understand how we also don't love her. And we're like, ah, why'd you do that? I really don't understand why she did the Archer's Curse on them. Still, even with the explanation, I totally agree with Evangeline. She's like, eh, but did you? When Jax and her were in the hollow together and he comes back with that wound and he's like leaning on the door frame and Evangeline worries for him, she denies it. And she's like, oh my gosh. And then he's like, no, just come here. Just be with me. And it was, ah! I have never wanted to read a book again right after I've already read it. And I read the ending twice. I will probably read it again, the whole thing. Can we talk about when they found the Mirth Stone? And Jax is making moves. Jax is like, he turned into a different person, but it was so gradual and great. So he was like, you know, obviously into Evangeline. <sighs> and she's like, oh, I wanna kiss him. Like maybe the curse won't be here. And I was like, I don't know about you guys, I wanted them to kiss, but I also was like, oh, but the tension is so good and I don't want to lose that. Especially since like Jax wasn't fully like, I wanted him to just express something first before they were to like just go into kissing. And so it didn't happen, but Jax was like, ah, he's like reaching out to her. What does he say? Oh my gosh, I need to find it. Oh my gosh, I also love the lines. Jax worked his jaw. Can you imagine? Also, Evangeline, her dreams were kind of insane. How it was chaos in the end. I was like, oh, holy cow. Also, we're not even gonna talk about the end yet. I loved that the truth stone, it was just, they were just spewing the truth. Jax was just like, he couldn't help but tell the truth. It was so good. I was like, spill the beans, tell us everything. Also, I love that we learned he didn't want to open the Valerie Arch. My mind blew up at that moment. I was like, what? Also, I loved when he bandaged her after she got hurt. <laughs> that was so cute. And then he jokes about it later, about how he just wanted to take her clothes off. <laughs> also, I just think the scene when they were at, when they were at the great Marywood Manor with Lala's like engagement party, I was just like, that was such a fun part. Like the dance, everyone was dressed up. We got to see like jealousy with Jax being like, um, no. You can't talk to other guys, but I can talk to other girls. We didn't even talk about when Jax takes Evangeline into the hallway. Things start escalating and then she's like, wait, I'm married. I also don't know how I feel because I'm very much into, obviously loyalty is great, but I'm like, her marriage was so random in the first book. It was so random. You don't have to be married if you don't want to. We will just forget about it. When Evangeline is in Jax's arms and they're like just sleeping, um, and she like says, for tonight I'm yours, but then she actually says, I'm yours. I was like, you go girl. Okay, we're back in the hollow. She's like, Jax, we're under the influence of the Mirth Stone. He's like, you think you'd only feel this way about me because of a rock? And obviously he's hurt. And I love that we got to see Jax. He's always been like, I don't care attitude. And then we got to see him like swallow back his pain and hurt clench his jaw. I love, love that. And he's like, you have no idea what I'm feeling right now. He says that right after that, but we don't know what Jax is feeling. We never found that out. He never like confessed every anything, which is why we're on the edge of our seats right now being like, what? How does he feel? Does he love her? Well, obviously he does. That was real. Evangeline was like, this isn't real. And then Jax completely changes and she's like, see, but then she found, she's like, wait, maybe he was just pretending, which we all know, Evangeline. We knew that he was just playing it up because he was hurt because you're a big bully. We'll jump to, let's jump to the very end because this was like such an intense part. <sighs> okay, I did not see that coming. I did not see Jax just coming out and saying, I don't actually want to open the Valerie Arch. That was a shocker, but then being like, I want to use the stones to go back in time for Donatella which I'm like, oh, boy, don't go back for Donadella. That's not gonna work out and you and Evangeline can make it work. And Evangeline's so hurt also before she gets, before she dies, holy frick, that was crazy. Evangeline is like, oh my gosh, I love him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. <laughs> and then chaos, that was shocking and sad. Chaos 
was like, thank you so much for saving my life. I seriously almost started tearing up. I was like, that was beautiful. And then he's like, Wah. and I was like, oh, what? That just happened. Did not expect her to die. Then it said the end. I seriously thought the book was over. I was like, wait, she just, I think she died. And then it kept going and I was so relieved. But the writing and just the plot, the storyline with that, Stephanie Garber, amazing. Kind of fiddling with time travel, doing that whole chapter, like same words, same discoveries from Evangeline, just different because Jax is now like, actually I changed my mind. I want to come. When Evangeline unlocks the arch and Jax is just like, you need to go. I don't know why you're here. Please leave. And she's like, wait. And he's like, I know my name. Stop saying it. Just go. I loved seeing Evangeline cry over this boy. Finally, she's crying over the right thing. I love that she admits, uh, you know, turn around. Cause you know, obviously the first time in this story, she discovered she loved him when she entered the arch. And now she's discovering after she's leaving the arch, oh my gosh, I love him. I need to tell him. And she's about to tell him and then Apollo comes and ruins it. Maybe this is perfect because I was always gonna wonder, I was like, what's gonna happen with Apollo when he's like, you know, I'll find a normal. And then Evangeline's like, well, now I'm married, I guess. Except Stephanie turned him into a villain, I'm guessing. And now we're just gonna hate him, which is fine. The cliffhanger there was amazing. If you guys read like Jax's point of view at the very end, it's like the first chapter, you know, when Evangeline goes up these like random stairs. This is Jax and he's like, Evangeline cares too much, hopes too much, forgives too easily. You can see how much he like doesn't care for Evangeline. Like, and you see it right here. He's like, oh, I see her blush. That's funny. He literally could not care less. And I loved seeing that at the end, he could not care more. Oh, we didn't even talk about his reaction when she died. Jax screamed. After this happened, you know, it says, this tragedy would certainly be a tale one day. And from the look of it was already cursed. If her lifeless body had not confirmed it, then it would have been made clear by the horrible scream of the fate who held her in his arms. <laughs> Jax screamed and he went back in time. And I wish he told Evangeline, I, why didn't he tell Evangeline? I mean, it makes it so good that he didn't because it's like the tension. Also, I want to know what happens with the Valors and everything. But so this is just such a good book with the adventure and the storyline as well as the romance. And I haven't been this invested in a romance in such a long time. It was so refreshing to just have something so original, really fun, a lot of character development. I love this book and I can't wait for the third one. I really can't. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably just reread this book. Yep. Um, so that is our my discussion for you guys today. But I hope that some of you can now feel like you're not alone. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if I should make more of these and